the background, please feel free to, to go and um, pick some. Um, okay, so net zero. Everybody, um, uh, I'm sure, have heard, has heard about it, but just in case, we wanted to provide you with a quick refresher on um, a document, not a guidance, I don't know how it's called, it's a, net, it's a case for net zero in private equity. So uh, the ICI um, working group has uh, developed a document, very short, that you can access through, this, again, this QR code, uh, I'll come back to it in a minute. Uh, for those of you who, don't, who are not familiar with ICI, um, it's uh, a working group of uh, GPs and, and, and companies like you who, and LPs as well, or only GPs? Only GPs. Uh, more than 200 members now, um, 3.2 trillion assets under management, so it's, uh, it means something. Um, and uh, with, uh, together with the people from uh, Turenne, Anavest Industrial and uh, Bregal, uh, Andefi came up with a, a guidance on um, really what's this, what is all about um, net zero and why should people from private equity care? And um, first of all, why another guide? I don't know, does any of you, and I would like you to raise your hand, does any of you read um, industry guides, you know, the big organizations guides. Does any of you read any of them? Three? Four people? Okay, well, you, you're making the case for exactly the reason why this guidance was produced. It's because nobody on the, um, you know, the investment teams, the, the managing partners, the executives, the CEOs, nobody has time to read these big, thick, specific guides. So we decided that it was time to uh, develop a guide which was short and sweet. Again, you can access it through the QR code. There is a two, three page executive summary which contains everything you need to know to understand why time for resolute action on climate is now. Um, so it's particularly designed for the level of understanding and expertise and business acumen of managing partners and uh, private equity um, uh, CEOs. So again, net zero, we all heard about it, but it's a demanding approach. Um, it requires a comprehensive, a comprehensive knowledge and understanding of external, internal factors. It's not something that you can do on the side by, by the ESG team doing some reportings. It entails a, a, a thorough review and um, reassessment of the investment practices from sourcing, even to fundraising, to be honest, from sourcing to uh, deploying capital, to monitoring portfolio, to exiting. And so there are many um, factors that we can discuss, obviously, but it's a continuous approach. It's a learning approach. And net zero is not a big word. It's um, a series of very strategic decisions, which at the end of the day can only be made by investment committees, by managing partners, by the people who make the decisions in private equity firms. And so it's a leadership concern, and that's why we're discussing it today again, because really it's a leadership concern. Um, I won't go into this page because it's too long, <laughs> and I won't bore you, but really, I think the one thing that you need to remember is that we believe that private equity firms are uniquely, uniquely positioned to take decisive action on climate change in their portfolio companies because of the very specific relationship that private equity firms have with their portfolio compared to public equity. So for me, it's the one thing that you need to keep in mind. And then again, please feel free to um, peruse the executive summary accessible through the QR code. Um, why? Okay, four drivers to understand why PE firms should take actions beyond the uh, technicalities, regulatory claims, whatever. Purpose, Vas-y. I'm so sorry. Um, purpose, value creation, regulation, and reputation. So uh, in this order, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so regulation, not the first one. 
Uh, I mean, if you only do uh, uh, climate change, uh, uh, net zero, solitary for regulation, uh, you won't go far uh, because it re requires a lot of energy. Uh, and those who have gone uh, into that path can, uh, will probably uh, tell you that uh, during the roundtable that it's a demanding approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the main driver should be purpose and value creation. So the belief that uh, it's the right thing to do first, <laughs> okay. Uh, and because it will, uh, you know, uh, create value. And uh, this uh, has a meaning in private equity. Huh? And that's a strong driver for deal teams. If you want to uh, make them uh, motivated, to motivate them on, on net zero, uh, they should, you should convince them that uh, they will create value, have a better performance through this. And we have plenty of examples of how, uh, of how a net zero trajectory can add value. Um, w do I need to mention the fact that you can also consider the reputational aspects of it? Do I need to? No, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> section B, the, the second big action is around, the second big section is around how to address and to handle candid conversations about this topic because we are convinced some of people, some of you people are convinced, maybe some people in your teams are convinced, but there are some resi resistances, there are some objections, there are some very legitimate questions. And it's not an easy topic in the sense that it's not, okay, you're good because you're a good person because you're convinced and you're a bad person because you really don't get it. It's not the whole conversation here. So in this guidance, you also have s supporting material um, arguments, um, uh, elements of discussion to open these conversations with a candid uh, perspective, a candid approach. And these are very common objections that we collected from the GP community, such as um, how can I sense, how can I assess my role? Is it really my role as a GP to do such approach? Um, uh, how will my LPs react? if uh, I have to uh, make an arbitrage be between short-term performance and long-term net zero approach. How, how am I supposed to, uh, to handle this, right? So these are very solid objections that we need to be, need to be addressed. And in, in this guidance, you will find um, elements for discussion and, uh, and some thoughts to uh, open this with your teams. Ethos? Yes, um, so how to do that? Um, Probably some of you are already member of the ICI, so the Initiative Climate, fi uh, yeah, Climate uh, for Climate International Initiative for Climate. Sorry, uh, and you, if you are a long-term member, you probably have a, a, a remark that uh, when you signed the paper of the ICI, there was no mention of net zero. So uh, you, we need it together to uh, update uh, the framework and uh, the commitment of uh, the member of the ICI. And you have seen that uh, there are two, more than 200 GPs that have signed this uh, initiative. So uh, uh, a refresh was needed. So we created uh, with a working group uh, the, this kind of you know, a roadmap that should be adapted, that is adapted to any uh, you know, level of expertise. Uh, you can start at any point of this roadmap. Uh, you can start right at the beginning, onboarding, uh, you can define your strategy, assess risk, set your targets, and then you enter into a new zone that is not, you know, a straightforward uh, and ascendant uh, trajectory or descendant, probably, if you <laughs> are talking about, uh, you know, decarbonization, um, because it's demanding and because the challenges will last decades. So you would like to convey the idea that you never achieve net zero, or at least not. Uh, in the coming 20 or 30 years. You try to uh, be on a pathway towards net zero. And so once you've met your targets, you miss your progress, you disclose outcomes, and you uh, realize that it's not enough because the situation is getting worse, because uh, you know, there is an acceleration of uh, climate change, and so you raise ambitions, and so on and so forth for a decade. We will be in that zone, so positive uh, uh, circle uh, for four decades. So let's be prepared uh, to uh, and be endurance uh, for this. And now it's your turn. So we promised a very small uh, top-down uh, part for this uh, climate summit and uh, mostly discussions within uh, peers. So 
it's your turn, and uh, we would like you to um, pick any of these uh, four common questions or objections or any other one, really, that you may have and that you may want to share with your peers around the table and uh, discuss what you think could be the answer, what you think could be um, interesting ways to address this concern or these objections. Um, so why should we care now about climate? Um, we, LPs or GPs, have other priorities, right? And maybe more vital priorities. Uh, second common objection, do my portfolio companies have the capacity to make this a top priority? Because, you know, inflation, supply chain, energy, whatever. The EBITDA is sinking. So do I really need to push them to do that, any of that today? Um, and it's a fair question. It's a fair question. Third question or objection, what, are, what about my two companies or two thematic funds? You know, they're gems. I love them. I, I mention them to all my LPs. You know, they're beautiful. They're impact positive. They're fantastic. They're doing great on climate change. Isn't it enough? Okay, I have uh, 80 other portfolio companies who are not doing so good, but isn't it enough already? So this is a, a common objection that we hear. What do you think? How do you want to um, address it with your peers? And last one, so it's a bit more technical. Um, some of you may not be discussing this subject already about offset, but if you do, uh, how about offsetting my emissions? Maybe, um, you know, I'm an investor, I can do calculations, it's all about really uh, physical um, um, math and physical flows, so yeah. Let's, uh, let's do some good in one part of the world and um, maybe the do less good uh, in other parts of the world and it will make a balance. How, how do you feel about that? And that's a very common question. How about offsetting my emissions? So please, um, each of you in your tables, pick one or two questions if you want to uh, split the table and um, discuss within the, amongst yourselves about is it a question that you already approached, you already solved within your teams? How do you feel about it? And um, yeah, we have um, a bit more than 30 minutes, I think, 20, 25 minutes to discuss this. And uh, thank you again for the, to the moderators to um, um, 